Welcome back. So today I'm really excited to tell you about wavelets, which you can think of as kind of a supercharged Fourier transform. Okay, so we've already seen how you can take the Fourier transform and decompose a signal into a sum of sines and cosines uh, into its frequency content. And we've shown that those sines and cosines form an orthogonal basis for the space of functions that you want to represent. And here in this wavelets lecture, we're going to see that you can generalize that idea of sines and cosines providing an orthogonal basis to other functions, uh, orthogonal functions, that might provide better representation of certain types of functions. So we're going to use wavelets a lot for things like image and audio compression. Uh, and really, wavelets has changed how we, how we compress and represent uh, signals in the digital era. Okay, so I'm going to start off by, by talking about kind of how we think of time series, Fourier transforms, and the spectrogram. So uh, if you have time series data, then you have this, uh, this time axis. I'm just going to write these up. So I have time series. Uh, sometimes you can Fourier transform this data and you get, um, you get the Fourier transform. And the idea that we've seen uh, in the spectrogram lecture is that if I have a time series, I have exquisite resolution of where my signal is in time, but I know absolutely nothing about what frequency, uh, let's call this the frequency axis, I, I know absolutely nothing about what frequencies are occurring at that moment in time. So I'm going to draw that as this kind of vertical bars where I have a lot of resolution in time, but I have a lot of uncertainty in the frequency. Similarly, when you Fourier transform, uh, same axis, time frequency, I know exactly what the frequency content of my signal is, but I know absolutely nothing about when those frequencies occurred in time. So I have uh, very high resolution in frequencies, uh, tons of uncertainty in where in time those frequencies occurred. Okay, so time series, Fourier transform. This is what motivated us to develop the spectrogram. Okay, so the spectrogram we saw earlier, the Gabor transform uh, spectrogram is where now we give kind of equal weighting to time and frequency, and we can break this up into, let's say, kind of a grid where we have maybe less time resolution than in our original time series and less frequency resolution than our Fourier transform, but uh, we know kind of when individual frequencies turn on and turn off in time. So we have a little bit of time information and a little bit of frequency information, okay? And what I'm going to show you today, this wavelet transform, um, is going to, so kind of wavelets, and this is also often called multi-resolution analysis, because what you're going to see is that we're going to get multiple uh, scales in, in time and frequency. In the wavelet analysis, what you have is um, this kind of hierarchical grading of time information and frequency information. So at very, very low frequencies, there's this observation that low frequencies tend to last for a long time and don't change that much or that quickly over time. So what we're going to do is we're going to have <coughs> a bar at the bottom, which is basically the lowest frequency. We don't really care when it occurs in time because we're going to assume it's on all the time. Okay, that's kind of your, your baseline low frequency. And then at the next level, we're going to split this in half and we're going to get a little bit less frequency resolution, but we're going to have uh, information about, you know, is it in the first half of your time series or the second half of your time series? And then at the next level, we're going to break this up into even more frequency resolution because at higher frequencies, they change faster in time, uh, but I'll have less resolution about exactly which of those high frequencies are turning on. And so this is kind of a multi-scale time frequency uh, decomposition that we're going to use the wavelet decomposition composition to compute. Uh, and the idea here is that the lower frequencies change more slowly in time, so I don't need as much uh, temporal accuracy. And then for higher and higher frequencies, I need more and more temporal accuracy, uh, but I get correspondingly more uncertainty in what exact frequency is turning on and off in that, in that range. And of course, I only drew this with three levels. Uh, in reality, you might have, you know, 10 levels to this, uh, to this wavelet decomposition if you like, okay? And so, uh, so the, the wavelet decomposition is kind of like a really, really good spectrogram that is tailored to spend as much information in the regions uh, as necessary. So low frequencies don't need as much information, higher frequencies need more uh, temporal resolution, and so on and so forth. So this is the wavelet decomposition.
Okay, now the idea behind a wavelet decomposition, it's exactly the same as what you're used to seeing in, uh, say, the Fourier decomposition or the Gabor transform. We're going to take some signal, some, some time series, or some spatial data, and we're going to project it onto an orthogonal basis. But in the wavelet transform, that orthogonal basis is not just going to be sines and cosines. It's going to be kind of a hierarchy of orthogonal functions that are going to get smaller and smaller in time or in space, these little windows uh, in time and space. So I'm going to write this out for you. Uh, this always starts with what's called a mother wavelet. So you have a uh, kind of a mother wavelet, which is basically just a shape. Okay, and we're going to call this... Um, some psi of t. And then from that mother wavelet, you can derive all of your uh, smaller wavelets, psi a comma b, uh, as a function of time, is going to be 1 over square root of a times psi of uh, t minus b divided by a. And so you could kind of imagine if this psi was something like a Gaussian, then B and A, what B would do is it would shift, it would slide that Gaussian left or right in time, so it would basically pick which window in time I'm at, and A would make this wavelet bigger or smaller. It would make it, uh, you know, a bigger A would make this wavelet smaller, I guess. So as B, as, as A increases, we're going up the levels, so as A goes from 1 to 2 to 4 to 8, we're going up the levels, making our windows smaller and smaller and smaller. And B is going to correspondingly slide that window across our, our time signal, okay? So this is, um, is the idea here. And then what we're going to be able to do is we're going to take, uh, and we're going to say that the wavelet transform, and this wavelet transform uh, is with respect to this mother wavelet psi uh, of the function f, and it's going to have these two parameters, a and b, and it's just the inner product of our function f of t with that particular wavelet psi a b t, okay? Uh, and I think it's, it's probably really helpful to give you an example of what one of these, these wavelets would look like uh, so that you can picture this, this wavelet transform, okay? So the example I wanna choose is the Haar wavelet, which is um, the oldest wavelet. This is, uh, I think this was around since like the 1910s. Um, I think this was introduced in 1910. And so the Haar wavelet is basically this, uh, the mother wavelet is a function that starts off at one and it goes down to negative one and that's the function. It's basically just a step function, plus one, minus one, um, over the whole interval that you're, the whole interval uh, that, you're, that you're wavelet transforming over. Okay, so this is psi. Uh, and I'm gonna call that psi uh, one, comma zero, okay, so it's the kind of scaled by A equals one, so we're not making it bigger or smaller, and B equals zero, so we're not shifting it at all. So this is the mother wavelet psi one zero. But then from this mother wavelet, you can build smaller wavelets. You can build the one that is in this left half that goes, again, from plus one to minus one, only in the left half. Or you could also build the one that goes in the right half to plus one, minus one, okay? So this is the psi, uh, let's see, this is the psi uh, one half zero, okay? So now, I guess I said this wrong earlier, so A, if you make it one half or one quarter or one eighth, it makes this window smaller and smaller and smaller. So this is the one half, uh, the one half wavelet, and this one would be the one half, uh, and I'm gonna shift it by one half. Okay, so, and, and you can keep going and going and going. So essentially, uh, this function here, the one zero wavelet, corresponds to this, um, this region of the decomposition here. Uh, this one half zero wavelet corresponds to this portion of the decomposition here. And let me maybe make blue here. This one half, one half wavelet will correspond to that portion of the decomposition. Okay, so the basic idea here, and notice that these are all orthogonal functions. So if I take the inner product of this function with this, I get zero because when this is plus one, this is half of its plus one and half of its minus one. So these have an inner product of zero. Similarly, with uh, with the bottom one and the top one, and also the bottom two are orthogonal because 
they're kind of uh, anti, you know, uh, correlated. This one is off, this one is zero when this one is on, and the bottom one is zero when the top one is on. So all of these wavelets are orthogonal by construction because we're basically taking this shape and we're shrinking it down into halves. And if, um, if the top shape, shape you know, kind of sums up to zero, then you're gonna get this orthogonal decomposition, okay? And what's nice is that you can imagine kind of if this is an audio signal or if you're doing this on an, an image or something, this big wavelet is gonna pull out big structures and each of these smaller wavelets is gonna pull out smaller and smaller and smaller structures in different portions of the signal, in different portions of the image or in different portions of the audio. So maybe, you know, at some level, these wavelets are gonna pull out, you know, the eyes on the left part of the face and the eyes on the right part of the face or something like that. Okay, good. So this is the basic idea of a wavelet. It's somewhere between a time series and a Fourier transform. It's kind of like an enhanced spectrogram where you're only putting resolution where it matters for, for your signal. And this is, this is completely motivated by kind of natural signals that humans care about, uh, where low frequency stuff doesn't change that fast in time, but high frequency stuff does. And so you wanna put more temporal resolution at higher frequencies and more uh, kind of frequency resolution at, at lower frequencies. Okay, so that's, that's the wavelet decomposition. Um, we're gonna use this a lot for image compression. So I'm gonna cook up some examples where we're going to use this to compress images. We're gonna do a two-dimensional wavelet transform uh, where psi is gonna be a function of x and y of, of both spatial directions. And we're going to use this idea of these kind of shrinking and shifting um, wavelet transforms to compress and to represent images very, very efficiently, okay? Uh, and I'll point out that there are hundreds of these, um, these wavelet transforms or these mother wavelets, lots and lots and lots of mother wavelets to choose from. Um, so I showed you the Haar wavelet, so I'm just gonna write these out. There's the Haar uh, wavelet. There is uh, the Dobashis wavelet. This is named after Ingrid Dobashis, who's one of the pioneers of this theory. It's kind of a fun, spiky, it's a little hard to draw, but this is the uh, Dobashi, the Dobashi wavelet. Um, there's also the Mexican hat wavelet, uh, which is kind of like this. Um, I don't know why it's not called the sombrera uh, wavelet, but it's called the Mexican hat wavelet. You can kind of see it looks like a sombrero. Uh, the coiflet is basically a Mexican hat, but with pointy corners. Uh, it's a little hard to draw, but I'll try. Uh, so that's kind of like a coiflet after uh, Ron Coifman, coiflet. And there's just more and more and more of these. Okay, there are there's hundreds of wavelets that are tuned to different data sets. So maybe images you want to use a Dobashi wavelet or a coiflet because you know I don't know if you can see like on the black background the there's there's these sharp corners that delineate images on a on a background, right? So you might want these really sharp kind of edges in your wavelet decomposition. So the the Dobashi and the coiflet are really good for that. Other signals, you might want something smoother, like a Mexican hat or a Gaussian. Um, and really, you get to choose. These are, and, and we know a lot about this. There's a lot of image science of which, uh, which wavelets to use for different compressions. I'll point out there are some excellent books. Um, uh, Ingrid Doba, she wrote a great kind of lecture series on wavelets. I think it's called 10 Lectures on the Wavelet. Um, and also uh, Stefan Malat from, from uh, Paris wrote a great, great book on, on wavelet analysis. So if you wanna know more, uh, there's a rich theory. This, this in some sense generalizes the Fourier transform. It's the same exact idea of, of basically expanding out a function in terms of a bunch of orthogonal functions. But now we're building these functions so that they are, are orthogonal on this kind of hierarchical or multi-resolution um, domain. So you have big wavelets, medium wavelets, and small wavelets, and they're all orthogonal to each other. Uh, but this, this gives you kind of enhanced signal compression over just a standard Fourier transform or spectrogram. Okay, so we're gonna play around with this for image compression, but really wavelets are, are everywhere, um, and you'll, 
Yeah, if you if you look, you'll find wavelets in in lots of, of modern technology. So JPEG, uh, the old technology, used to use Fourier transforms for image compression. The new JPEG 2000 uses wavelets uh, for image compression. Okay, uh, good. So that's all coming up in MATLAB and in Python. We'll code this up for image compression. Thank you.